the documentary Seaspiracy pushed its way into the Netflix top 10 for a few weeks, bringing a lot of attention to commercial fishing. The film makes some bold and dire claims about the state and future of the ocean. But are those claims supported by science? I went to an expert to find out. So one of the standout claims or headlines from Seaspiracy was the idea that there'd be virtually no fish in the ocean by 2048. Is there any um, scientific research or, or reason to believe that that might be true? So first of all, no. Um, and where that claim came from is an old and outdated research paper from about 15 years ago. Um, and since then, some of those same researchers have actually done other work that has shown there are fisheries improving in a lot of places around the world. Um, and even that original claim was really kind of misinterpreted um, by the media at the time, but that big scary claim has kind of stuck and gets brought up again and again. The documentary also claims that um, up to half, or in some cases more than half, of the plastics in the ocean come from discarded uh, fishing nets and, and fishing gear. Uh, again, is this something that is accurate by today's standards? So no. Um, the the statistic that was in the film was really specific to the Great Pacific garbage patch. And there has been research on that big floating patch that's out in the Pacific that shows that about half of it that's floating on the surface is from last fishing gear. Um, but they think that part of the reason for that is because the fishing gear that gets lost is larger. It stays clumped up together, it floats at the surface where some of the microplastics are maybe falling to the bottom or floating away. And the, the global numbers around ocean plastic pollution show that really it's just about 10% of global ocean plastics um, that are coming from lost uh, fishing gear and from the fishing industry. And it's about 80% of the ocean plastic pollution that is coming from land-based sources. So industry and things that we do as consumers and poor waste management and all of those kinds of things um, coming from the land. Um, that's really where the bulk of ocean plastic pollution is, is happening. So a lot of the Seaspiracy um, footage and um, uh, statistics are coming not from the United States. How different are the fishing regulations here and um, what does that mean kind of for the sustainability of eating fish at least here? Yeah, it's a really good question. And in the US today, we have some of the best fisheries science and, and management in the world. Um, that hasn't always been the case. We really only started um, significantly managing our fisheries in the late 70s. But over the past several decades, we have continued to strengthen our fisheries management, or in other words, our, our fisheries regulations at the federal and the state levels. Um, and fishermen have been working really hard to implement those rules and regulations, um, all with the goal of making sure that we have sustainable fisheries in this country. Um, and, and like I mentioned, um, we have actually improved a lot of fisheries through that strengthened fisheries management over the past couple of decades. So US fisheries today are a really good bet um, if you're looking to, to buy and eat responsible and, and sustainable seafood. Hmm. So you don't have to give up fish. Um, you know, she pointed out that it's important to try to make sure you get fish from the United States if you can, because it was fair in the documentary, some of the practices in other countries are not as sustainable, um, and some of them are, are much more cruel. So I think this is a case where maybe the spirit was good, you know, trying to keep mm -hmm. things sustainable and help mm -hmm. um, the earth, but there was some either misinterpreted or purposely misleading um, statistics that were interspersed in that, and that can do a lot of damage, I think, um, on its, in its own way. It certainly brought a lot of attention to the issue. It did, and it's very careful. This reminds me of, of the, um, the uh, Inconvenient Truth with Al mm. Gore. As, as a meteorologist, atmospheric scientist, I didn't really, I don't think that was a very good movie for the climate change uh, because it took some really dire predictions just like the no fish in the ocean, right. and it really mucked up the message of the real science that was going on, and it feels like this is similar. So make your own choices, of course, about sure. seafood, but you don't have to necessarily feel bad, especially if you're eating it somewhat locally. Well